Welcome to the Silicon Fox podcast, where we explore the habits and stories of high performers. Join us as we dive into their journeys, analyze live blood tests, and break down the science behind key biomarkers to help you optimize your health. I'm your host, Mitchell Eschner, an ex-pro soccer player, a current sponsored hybrid athlete, a health tech founder, and a longevity enthusiast. Today, we're diving into a biomarker that could change how you think about heart health, apolipoprotein B, or ApoB for short. If you've never heard of this test before, you're not alone. Most people are familiar with cholesterol numbers, but ApoB might actually be a better predictor of your cardiovascular risk. In today's episode, we'll break down what ApoB really measures, why it's superior to traditional cholesterol tests, and how your lifestyle choices from exercise to sleep to diet directly impact these levels. We'll also talk about who should be getting tested and why this biomarker deserves a spot on your next blood panel. Let's start with the basics. Think of ApoB as the protein wrapper around all the bad cholesterol particles in your blood. Every single particle that can cause heart disease, whether it's LDL, VLDL, or other atherogenic lipoproteins, carries exactly one ApoB molecule. So when we measure ApoB, we're essentially counting the total number of dangerous particles floating around in your bloodstream. Here's why this matters more than your regular cholesterol test. Traditional cholesterol tests measure the weight of cholesterol inside these particles. But here's the problem. You could have fewer particles that are really packed with cholesterol, or you could have tons of smaller particles with less cholesterol each. Two people could have identical LDL cholesterol numbers, but completely different particle counts, and it's the particle count that really drives heart disease risk. This is where ApoB shines. It gives us a direct count of every single atherogenic particle, regardless of how much cholesterol each one carries. Studies consistently show that ApoB is a more accurate predictor of cardiovascular risk than traditional cholesterol measurements. In fact, the 2021 Canadian guidelines now recommend ApoB as a key target for lipid management. ApoB levels tend to track from childhood into adulthood. So the levels you have now are partly influenced by the lifelong exposures to these atherogenic particles. This makes early intervention and lifestyle changes even more important. Now you might be wondering, what does this have to do with athletic performance? The connection isn't direct as to say VO2 max, but it's more important than you might think. Recent research from the Cardia study, which followed people for two decades, found something interesting patterns. At age 45, there wasn't much difference in physical activity levels between people with different ApoB levels. But here's where it gets interesting. People who are more active in early adulthood sometimes showed higher rates of ApoB increase over time. But before you panic, this doesn't mean exercise is bad. It likely means that people starting with very low ApoB levels saw them normalize into healthier ranges with increased activity. But here's the real game changer. Structured aerobic exercise training consistently lowers ApoB levels. A comprehensive review of randomized controlled trials found that aerobic exercise significantly reduced the atherogenic particles while boosting the good ones. This isn't just about heart health. It's about creating the physiological foundation for sustained performance and longevity in sport. There are also some indirect connections to performance. Higher ApoB levels are associated with lower bone mineral density, especially in men and certain age groups. Strong bones are obviously crucial for any athlete. There's also an inverse relationship between ApoB and testosterone levels in men. As ApoB goes up, testosterone tends to go down. Since testosterone is key for muscle mass, strength, and recovery, managing ApoB becomes part of optimizing your hormonal environment for performance. Your sleep quality has a huge impact on your ApoB levels. Research shows that women who sleep six hours or less per night have 75% higher odds of elevated ApoB levels. That's a massive increase in cardiovascular risk just from poor sleep. But it gets more complex with sleep disorders like sleep apnea. People with sleep apnea don't just have higher ApoB levels. They have more of the really dangerous small dense LDL particles. Sleep apnea creates this perfect storm of intermittent oxygen drops, sleep fragmentation, and increased stress hormones that all mess with your lipid metabolism. The mechanisms here are fascinating. Poor sleep increases inflammatory markers like TNF-alpha and IL-6, which directly influence how your body processes lipids. Sleep restrictions also increase insulin resistance, which impairs how your liver handles ApoB particles. Now here's the tricky part about sleep apnea treatment. While CPAP therapy can improve symptoms, the research on whether it actually lowers ApoB levels is mixed. This highlights why measuring ApoB could be valuable for monitoring how well your sleep disorder treatments are actually reducing cardiovascular risk. Your daily habits have also a profound impact on ApoB levels, and some of the relationships are exactly what you'd expect while others might surprise you. Let's start with the obvious one, smoking. A comprehensive meta-analysis found that smokers consistently have higher ApoB levels and worse ApoB to ApoA1 ratios. Smoking also reduces the protective apolipoproteins. This is a clear cause and effect relationship where smoking directly worsens your atherogenic particle burden. If you needed another reason to quit, here it is. Now, diet quality follows predictable patterns too. People with lower healthy eating index scores, meaning poor overall diet quality, consistently have higher ApoB levels. But just like with exercise, the cardio study found that people with better diets in early adulthood sometimes showed higher rates of ApoB increases over time. 
Again, this likely reflects people with initially very low levels, normalizing the healthier ranges. Recent research shows your body has built-in quality control mechanisms for ApoB production. Under normal conditions, a protein called sortolin doesn't do much to ApoB levels. But when your liver is under metabolic stress from things like high-fat diets or cellular stress, sortolin kicks into gear and actually reduces ApoB secretion by directing excess particles towards degradation. This suggests your body is trying to protect you from overproducing atherogenic particles during times of metabolic strain. It also means that chronic stress, whether from poor diet, lack of exercise, or even psychological stress, might influence ApoB not just through systemic changes, but right at the cellular level where these particles are made. So now, who should be getting ApoB tested? Obviously, if you have diabetes or known heart disease, this should probably be on your radar. But the list doesn't stop just there. For athletes specifically, understanding your ApoB levels helps you make more informed decisions about your fueling strategies, training intensity, and recovery protocols. We know that high carb intake around training can spike blood glucose, and intense exercise triggers hormonal changes that can temporarily elevate glucose. While this is normal and necessary for performance, understanding your overall atherogenic particle burden helps you optimize the balance between performance nutrition and long-term cardiovascular health. What is most compelling about ApoB research is how it reveals the interconnected nature of your health. Your sleep affects your ApoB levels, which influences your testosterone, which impacts your training and recovery. Your diet quality affects ApoB, which influences your long-term cardiovascular risk, which determines your ability to stay active as you age. This isn't about optimizing one biomarker in isolation. It's about understanding how all these systems work together. ApoB serves as the central hub that reflects the cumulative impact of your lifestyle choices on cardiovascular health. This research also emphasizes that early life matters tremendously. The lifestyle habits you build in your 20s and 30s don't just affect how you feel today. They're setting the trajectory for your ApoB levels and cardiovascular risk for decades to come. So what can you actually do with this information? First, the basics still matter. Regular aerobic exercise consistently improves ApoB levels. A high-quality diet helps. Not smoking is crucial. Getting adequate quality sleep is non-negotiable. But ApoB testing can help you personalize those recommendations. Maybe you discover that despite eating well and exercising regularly, your ApoB levels are climbing. That might prompt you to look at sleep quality, stress management, or whether you need more aggressive lifestyle interventions. Or maybe you find that your ApoB levels are excellent despite having a family history of heart disease. That's valuable information too. It suggests your current approach is working and provides motivation to maintain those healthy habits. For anyone serious about longevity and health span, ApoB deserves consideration as part of your regular health monitoring toolkit. It's not going to replace traditional cholesterol testing, but it provides a more complete picture of your cardiovascular risk profile. Whether you're an athlete looking to optimize performance and longevity, someone with a family history of heart disease, or just interested in taking a more proactive approach to your health, ApoB testing provides valuable insights that traditional cholesterol panels might miss. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope you've gained some insight into this biomarker. If you found this episode helpful, be sure to subscribe and share it with others who might benefit. And as always, I encourage you to take charge of your health by staying informed and being proactive about your body signals. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on the Silicon Fox Podcast. Thank you.